we gotta kick up that flavor just a little bit for very little money. And I know some chefs and foodies are like, that looks a hot mess. I know, please. Hi, I'm Ayo, and I'm a private chef. Typically, when I work for clients, I have a really big or unlimited budget, but Tasty is challenging me to create a three-course meal for four guests for $20, which honestly feels like a little bit of a setup. Wish me luck. So for the first course, I'm gonna set my oven to 425, and I'm actually going to crisp up this prosciutto I found for $4. So we have a nice crunchy topping that gives our tartine some depth and some texture. Next, I got the bread for $1, and I'm gonna make the base of the tartine by covering both sides of the bread in olive oil and also toasting it in the oven with the prosciutto to save time. So the prosciutto is gonna go in the oven for about six minutes, and the toast are gonna go in the oven for anywhere between seven to 10 minutes. While those are in the oven, we're gonna make our whipped lemon ricotta. First, we're gonna put the ricotta into the food processor. A lot of food processors need some kind of liquid or something in the bottom to get them going, so I'm gonna add my tablespoon of olive oil pretty close to the blade. Good, good, good tip is to use one ingredient twice. So for this step, I'm actually only gonna use the zest of this lemon, and I'll use the juice later. So I'm gonna add a little salt, and then I'm gonna start this bad boy. Oh. I'm actually gonna let this sit for a second and move on to getting my zucchini ready for our presentation. I'm actually gonna create zucchini ribbons, which will give us a little height too. And this is what you want for your peel. So I'm gonna season these with pepper and I'm gonna add a little salt because everything needs a little salt and just a hint of olive oil because it's gonna make them easier to twirl. And basically you're just gonna give it a little toss. It doesn't need a lot. And you wanna be really gentle with them because you can overwork the zucchini and then they just get watery and they get really flat. And we wanna keep that crunch and that height. I'm gonna go get my toast and my prosciutto and let's put together course number one. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do with your hot bread is rub it with the fresh garlic cloves. And I know if you've never done this, it's like, what? But this gives it so much flavor. Hold on tight to the garlic and keep rubbing it. And you wanna do that to all of them, both sides. We're gonna take about two tablespoons of ricotta and just scoop a big dollop right in the middle. And I know some chefs and foodies are like, that looks a hot mess. I know, that is why we have this. And I'm actually just gonna create some nice little hills and valleys for my zucchini to live in. All right, so our next step is definitely like the showstopper of this course. So what you're gonna do for your ribbons, take a little piece, you can wrap it around a finger or a pair of tweezers if you're that kind of chef and you have them. I am that kind of chef, I have them. And when you make the curl, you just slide it off. You just wanna create a little ribbon. And when you put it down, it just stays. And basically we're gonna do that two to three more times for each toast. We're gonna take half of one piece of our prosciutto and we're just gonna give it a little crumble. And once you have a couple little pieces, you're just gonna lightly sprinkle them over your zucchini toast. So after the prosciutto, we're gonna top it with some parsley. I'm going to use Italian parsley, never curly. Do not buy curly parsley. I don't know why they sell it. It's literally grass, please. So the parsley is pretty much our last step. So I'm just gonna salt and pepper it and then we can move on to our main course. And the great thing about this one is this thing came in at $2.21. I honestly couldn't believe it. So for my chicken filling, I have a half a cup of spinach, a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, and a little bit of minced garlic, about one clove. Okay, so I've mixed up our filling. We're just gonna set this aside and we're gonna start pounding out this chicken. When you're pounding out chicken, two very important things. Plastic wrap. You want one on the bottom and one on the top. And basically this is just gonna protect your chicken from flying everywhere. It's gonna protect everything around you. When you're pounding it out, you wanna get it about a quarter of an inch thick. And if you do get a hole or two, don't worry about it because that is what the prosciutto is here for. It's a really great stress reliever too. All right, and I think we are about there. I'm actually gonna go ahead and season my chicken thigh. And I use the thigh because thighs are always much cheaper than breast. So our chicken is seasoned and pounded out. I'm gonna get a new piece of plastic wrap and lay two pieces of prosciutto down. I'm just gonna lay my chicken down inside the prosciutto. And then we're gonna add our filling. And I'm gonna make sure I create a thin layer all across so you get an equal amount of cheese and spinach in one bite. Tuck your thumbs under the bottom and you just create a nice tight roll all the way. And if you get a little filling on the side, you know, just shove it back in. Everyone's gonna go together. The good thing about putting the plastic wrap down 
my first is we're already ready. So I'm actually gonna take the end furthest away from me and just really tightly roll her up. And what this does is gets the chicken kind of used to being in this shape and it makes it a lot easier when it comes time to sear it. We're searing them so we can help the prosciutto get crispy. We're gonna lock in our moisture before we put it in the oven. And I'm gonna create a little bit of fond at the bottom of the pan, which basically means we're gonna get a little bit of brown bits so when we deglaze it to make our sauce, it'll have a little bit of the meat flavor, which just helps tie the whole dish together. So this is what we want. This is golden brown delicious. Since I got that on one side, I'm just gonna turn them so I can keep getting all my sides nice and brown. So these are about ready. I actually added some toothpicks because they started to unroll a little bit. So I'm gonna take these out and transfer them to this pan so we can put them in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes at 400 degrees. So now we're gonna make our sauce. We're gonna slice our peppers. So what you're gonna do is just split it in half down the middle. You wanna remove the seeds and the membranes because when we create our red pepper sauce, they're just gonna make it gritty. So roasting the pepper is a really good idea for this sauce because it's gonna give us a ton of flavor. It completely changes the flavor profile of the pepper for very, very little money. Very little money. So let's go broil these for two to three minutes. Once the skin is nice and black, it's time for them to come out. So my peppers are done. I put them in this bowl and wrap them so it steams them and that skin is just going to melt off. We're gonna blend this so you don't really need it to be like a nice chop. To create more depth of flavor, first we're gonna saute this pepper. We're also gonna add two cloves of minced garlic. It smells great. So now I'm gonna deglaze this with our lemon juice. So when we just say deglaze, it literally means pick up all the brown bits or anything that could be stuck to the pan. So I have a cup and a half of chicken broth. I'm gonna add that to my sauce before we get to blending. All right, so this looks ready, so I'm just gonna pour it in the blender. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this back to our pan. And I know this feels like a lot of steps for a sauce, but to me, the sauce is the most important part. So now we're just gonna let this come up to a boil and we're gonna turn it down a little so it doesn't boil over, but you do want it to reduce by about half. So this is reduced, so I think we're good to go. The only thing we're missing for this is something to give it like that luxurious feel, which is where the butter comes in. So I'm going to add this very, very cold butter, about a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half at a time, because you do not want to break your sauce, which is a very technical way of saying your sauce is screwed. So once one of them has melted into your pan and it looks good, add the next one. This looks beautiful, but I mean, what, what doesn't look beautiful after having six tablespoons of butter added to it? Come on. For this dish, I'm using fettuccine. So basically, I'm just gonna give it a nice little twirl in the sauce. All right, let's see what this inside looks like. Oh, that, that is sexy. 20 bucks, you can't, you cannot be mad at this. So as you can see, when I get into my pasta, I just start creating like just a little twirl and I'm just gonna put it directly in the center and just drop it. And because we spent all that time making these pretty rolls, we're gonna stagger them so you can see all of the pieces. All we need is a little Italian parsley. And finally, we're gonna put some fresh cracked black pepper over the top. And that's our main course. Surprisingly, it came in at 189 per servant and it looks amazing. I'm excited, so let's go ahead and start on dessert. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a teaspoon and a half of this gelatin and I'm just gonna add the gelatin to the water. And then we're gonna let it sit for about five minutes. So while that's happening, we're gonna add our half and half and our sugar. And then I'm just gonna give it a little stir while I bring it up just under a boil. I'm gonna add our gelatin to it and I'm just gonna keep stirring it. So now we're gonna strain it and it's just to make sure we don't get any little bits of gelatin or anything and make sure it has a nice creamy mouthfeel. Once our cream has cooled down a little bit, I'm gonna add it to our cups. They're gonna sit at a really cool angle. Just another little plating treat to make them look a little fancier than they actually are. I have a pound of thawed frozen strawberries and I'm gonna add them to my pan. And with them, I'm going to add a quarter cup of sugar and a half a cup of water. I'm gonna do this until they come up just under a boil till they have a nice bubble to them until some of the water comes out of the strawberries. And we're just gonna puree it. Oh, it smells so good, it's beautiful. So I'm just gonna put this back. We're gonna keep it warm because we're gonna add back in our gelatin. All right, this is good to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. Got some chunky bits, some seeds, all the things from the strawberries. So I think we got it all out and we are ready to set. I've transferred my strawberry puree to a measuring cup and I'm just gonna pour it over the white bars. You need to let this cool a little bit. You don't wanna do it while it's hot. 
So I'm gonna let these sit for two to four hours and hope that I was able to make this pretty and tasty, because that's really the true test of this, right? It needs to taste good and not like it costs $20. All right, that's our strawberry panna cotta. Came in at $1.06 six per serving, which is insane. Like, I think it's beautiful. So for $20, I was able to create a super seasonal tartine. There's a roasted red pepper sauce. I wrapped my chicken in the same prosciutto. And finally, we made this awesome panna cotta. I'm actually really proud of this, you guys. I think I did a pretty good job. Okay, this is really good. <laughs> I cannot believe this was a dollar and six cents. It tastes like we really put some effort forth. Like we, like me and y'all, we did this together. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Ayo Cherry. If you want more of me, you can always follow me on Instagram. Let us know in the comments what else you think we should make. Please try this, cause it actually came out super good. So I thank you guys for enjoy it. Bye. I'm gonna eat some more of this. This is really good. Oh yes.